Joining me now is Steve Quayle. Of course, you can find him at stevequayle.com. That is Q-U-A-Y-L-E.com. And Steve, you know, we want to talk about World War III. As we mentioned uh, here as we're talking to each other before the break, uh, it, one of my favorite movies has been Blast from the Past. And I think we're kind of at the point in real life that they ended up that film where you've got the guy pacing off his underground bunker again. But uh, what do you see happening in terms of the revival of tensions? Uh, the Cold War has certainly been started up successfully in Ukraine. Uh, we've got issues happening in the South China Sea, territorial issues where uh, China is coming in and trying to establish uh, domination in that part, being challenged by the U.S. military. Talk about uh, what you see happening in light of the new Cold War. Will it turn into a new hot war? Well, I think we are already seeing the opening salvos of a hot war. You know, one of the headlines and one of the articles that was really uh, putting forth the idea that the billionaires are headed to their bunkers. Yeah. And I think it was in that, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah in New Zealand, other places, other places every yeah. place around the world. Big money has access to big info brokers, information brokers, the intelligence agency slash business relationship, i.e. Google, Microsoft, any of the tech uh, companies, very, very close. So private intelligence has become a big deal in the back rooms of uh, uh, big money. I see that we are seeing, if you will, the orchestrated buildup of tensions to the point where at something has to give. We only hear of the real news coming from the Ukraine when we get people that are posting on the front lines or the Russians warning. What I've learned about the Russians, and, and let me share this, I think, and again, Alex and I have both made the statement, we're not Russophiles, but mm -hmm. it, it's astonishing to me that there are actual people who represent the United States in Congress and Senate who take nuclear war as kind of a casual well, you know, we'll just go bomb yeah. this or bomb that. Yeah, and it's reflected in the American population as well. They're very casual about it, unlike the Russians. But, of course, the Russians have a memory of massive destruction going back to World War II. We didn't see that here in America, the people who survived. Well, well, the current entity in the White House has been destroying the military for the last eight years of his reign. Uh, the Russians have been building up. And by the way, Russians have some very sophisticated weapons. I remember years ago when I started on talk radio, David, the Vladimir Zironovsky, you know, they used to call him Mad Vlad. He talked about a weapon system called the Elipton, E-L-I-P-T-O-N. And, you know, they're not idle boasts. And I've seen some really, I would say, provocative uh, moves to almost get them to strike first. You know, yeah. look, we're surrounding Russia, and, and, and that's called encirclement. And look, I mean, when I say, look, people, please open your eyes, you know, every maybe you guys should have a new InfoWars binocular special so people can see beyond their nose. And I'm not mm -hmm. kidding. OK, mm -hmm. what is happening is that and Alex and I talked about this. The virtual world has robbed people's ability to relate to the real world. The difference in the uh, ability to protect your population determines your nuclear policy. Mm -hmm. Russia, another headline just on Drudge a couple days ago, Putin building more bunkers, you know? And the Russian missile systems, or S-500, the, the ability to field more submarines, the ability to update and upgrade, and the ability of the strength of will. See, here's what you've got. You've got somebody who knows what he, he can do, telling the rest of the world, you better realize what we can, we can do. You see the destruction of the American military, and I have a different reason for that. I believe that because of the war against God in this country, you know, it's God's the one that gave us victories. I mean, half the Marine air, uh, airplanes can't fly. Air Force is going down to the salvage yard in Arizona to pick parts, you know. But at We've the had air superiority for such a long period of time, and yet... Where is the point of attack, really, in the military by the Satanists? Okay, it's been at the Air Force Academy. Yes. <laughs> it's where they come in. And, oh, man. And, you know uh, what, David? Overturn uh, the expression of religion and then establish, uh, the, you know, the celebration of these pagan rituals there at the Air Force Academy. I'm glad you bring that up because the, uh, the idea is, is that they actually think, and this is something that people lose track of, in the, the Illuminati elite Luciferian world, they actually believe that they have the weapon systems to take on God. Now, my mm -hmm. simple question to that is, who do you think made the raw materials and created them simply by speaking them into existence? You won't really believe what you make with those can yeah. take, and, and, but that's how blind they are. I believe that this is the ultimate, if you will, 
uh, trap to bring as many people into the destructive forces and field of nuclear weaponry. And again, most people don't know the difference between a fission bomb, a fusion bomb, uh, neutron weapons, and the laser weapons. I've actually had people in the state of Texas who are high up in uh, military intelligence and actual special operations tell me they got stuff now that makes atom bombs look like pea shooters. Mm -hmm. When you hear that from a four-star general, he didn't tell me what it was, but he told me that they have them. And the Russians have the same thing. And so what now we're seeing is we're seeing coordinated warfare. We're seeing weather warfares. We're seeing, excuse me, warfares in multiple dimension, different areas of warfare and warfares. That means multiple countries uh, using their high-tech weather weapons against each other. Well, one of the concerns I have is what happens with the, the reverberation effect of everybody bouncing uh, radio waves or scalar waves or whatever off the ionosphere and everything's heating up. I maintain that the state of Texas has been under weather warfare attack for years, and I, I can pretty much back it up. I wrote a book called Weather Wars and Unnatural Disasters, and still people don't get it that when you got Secretary of Defense Cohen, you get Zygmunt Brzezinski talking about that one nation can make war on another nation, and then you understand that into a nuclear theater now, we don't even know what the Russians truly have. Because under the guise of, you know, the Soviet Union is gone, the former Soviet Union is gone. But we have, how do I say this? Children shouldn't play with nuclear weapons. Yeah. We have yeah. this, if you will, this liberal stupidicus. Oh, here's a new one. Okay. <laughs> a new Latin. This is in Latin, but liberalis, <laughs> liberalis stupidicus. Dumicus unto deathicus, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes. So I'm not trying to make fun of this, but here's yeah. the deal. In the background, they're showing right now, they're showing the, the mushroom clouds, they're showing the devastation of cities. Neutron weapons can kill all the people without having a shock wave, blast wave, and the thermal effect because our bodies just aren't designed to take intense neutron bombardment. I actually, David, interviewed Sam Cohen, the inventor of the neutron bomb. Mm -hmm. He told me on talk radio for three or four different multi-hour shows that we, 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 the United States government, gave to the Chinese the neutron weapons. So it's not just the atomic bomb, you know, and the blast from the past. I'll tell you what, in my opinion, everybody should start stepping up those, uh, uh, those preparations, preparations yeah. and, uh, and, and picking them up too. And, and this is critical. The shutdown of all important article staples, it doesn't matter if it's food, water, clothing, survival supplies, that's gonna come. Too many truckers are idle. Uh, too many uh, train engines or whatever locomotives are sidetracked, and the compression of the middle class. Middle class just doesn't have the money anymore they used to. Mm -hmm. And when you hear the candidate for the president, uh, Hillary Clinton, talking about she's going to tax the middle class more, good night. That's like uh, uh, that's like a vampire saying to the the corpse or to his other vampire, run that corpse through the uh, ringer so we can get the last ounce of blood or the last milliliter of blood. Mm -hmm. It is so late in the game that I believe this, that it is no longer just, you know, somebody said, well, that we went through the Cuban Missile Crisis. You don't know what went on behind the Cuban Missile Crisis. What we're going through now is real. I don't believe it's just, uh, you know, oh, maybe we will, maybe we won't. I think the, the stupid indifference and the denial of the real threat that uh, nuclear, and I, I see this, I see Russia and China coming against us. And I think now is a time for people to prepare because we're looking at massive economic disruption. When we look at uh, automated cars coming in, robotics coming in and taking people's jobs, we're looking at massive unemployment that will be both horizontal and vertical in the economy. It's gonna affect all different segments of the economy and it's gonna affect it at every different level. We're going to have massive unemployment. We're looking at uh, automated uh, uh, trucks that are going to be driving and so forth. So now is the time really to prepare. But I think it's absolutely amazing when we look at the difference in attitude, the American people, as you point out, as we began this, versus Russia. They lived, the civilian population there lived through World War II. They saw that kind of massive destruction. People here just can't believe that that's going to happen. Well, in denial of reality is the, I would say this, if there is a medical condition, I believe we've been programmed real quick. We are the most psychologically programmed uh, population of any nation in the world for defeat. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Steve Quayle. SteveQuayle.com.